Oh, this is really blowing my mind. It's amazing. Oh, shit. I get it, and it, I think it's f***ing incredible. Hello, welcome to this video. <laughs> Weird. My name's Dan, aka Lucian, I'm a music producer and a songwriter, and today I'm going to be reacting to Homogenic by Bjork. So let's go. I think I've been saying, well, I've been saying Bjork. I've, everyone in England says Bjork. I keep getting told off for saying Bjork and not Bjork. So we'll see. I'll probably end up doing both today. Um, <laughs> Here we are back with another reaction from this wonderful, crazy artist. If you haven't been following my Bjork journey, I did like a discovery video. So I picked a bunch of songs across her discography, like a broad thing. And then I went back through the comments of that video and I chose um, a bunch more songs to react to, like based on your recommendations. And in those recommendations, most of the top ones for one, were for uh, songs from this particular album. And loads of people were saying, you have to react to the whole album for Homogenic. So I thought, yeah, okay, fine, let's do it. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. I haven't reacted to our earlier ones, but maybe I will if you want me to. Let me know in the comments, of course. Um, before we get started, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And if you want extra content from me, then over on the Patreon, you can actually request song reactions, you can request album reactions, and you can watch all of my videos uncut and early and without any adverts and stuff. Basically, there's multiple tiers for you to get involved in whatever form you want. Yeah, it's a fun old time. Loads of extra stuff. The link is in the description for that. Um, and also, if you want to check out my music too, I'm actually working on some new stuff. Hopefully, we'll have a song out mm, beginning of next month, maybe. Link to all that is also in the description. So yeah, make sure to check that all out. Let's go on to this video. Okay, cool. Song number one, this is Hunter. Cool. I like the way she's used the toms there. Really, really cool effect. Like super cool panning, atmospheric vibes. If travel is searching, I don't think I've ever heard drums used in quite the same way before. But it still leaves a lot of space for the center, you know? It's very organic, isn't it? The drums, like, and the way they kind of come in and come out, like and the way it's building. These strings are sick. Oh. Love the strings, gorgeous. I just put most of my built reactions saying, I love the strings. <laughs> oh. Oh, nice. I like the resolution there. I love how positive and like optimistic it sounds. Oh, I love where, where it's going with the key changes. Uh, I wonder what she's hunting for. I love how these strings almost feel like they're, it's like from a movie, isn't it? Like the building up to the hunt, it feels like, you know? I love the drums and I love how they haven't like gone into a, like a typical pop place. Oh. Nice. Very cool. I bloody adored the drums. Were astound. Oh, my hair. So unique. Like I don't think I've heard anything that like uses drums in a way that kind of has this sense of movement and a sense of rhythm that's very different to kind of typical band drum setup. So she has like a kind of Tom-esque kind of lower sound that goes dun 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 dun. And then on the right hand side you then, that then kind of evolves into like more like a snare. So it almost kind of has a marching feel to it. And it seems to like evolve and devolve like throughout the song in a very organic way, which I think is something that, that I've picked out of a lot of Bjork's production is this organic feel. But it's really good because it kind of gives it a level of drive, but it doesn't ever feel too like in your face and leaves a lot of space in the center for her voice and the lyrics and everything. Very nicely done. I really like that. Let's have a look at the lyrics. If Travel is searching and home what's been found. I'm not stopping. I'm going hunting. I'm the hunter. I'll bring back the goods. I don't know when. So maybe it's like her trying to figure out her future. You know, if travel is searching and home is what's been found, then I'm not stopping. So she's suggesting that she hasn't 
found a home yet. She doesn't, she's not ready to stop. And actually what she's going to do is go hunting. She's going to go traveling. She's going to look around. She's going to explore. And at some point she'll be able to bring back the fruits of her labor. You know, she'll be able to bring back something that she'll be able to call home. You know, you left me on my own to complete the mission. Now I'm leaving it all behind. I'm going hunting. So it seems as if maybe she's maybe left a relationship or somebody left her and she's like I've got this newfound independence and I'm gonna explore myself and I'm gonna explore my life and see what happens very cool quite a good way to start an album actually with that kind of thing because it's almost like setting up maybe the album is going to be that exploration um for better or worse maybe that's what she's going to discover yeah I like it. Very cool. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is song number two, Yoga, which is something I did in my last video. But let's listen to it again and, uh, yeah. I love, like, the kind of almost, like, is it Baroque era strings? Like, it gives it a very kind of medieval feel, you know? It's only with you Emotional This state of Oh, yeah. This one. Emergency. I'm trying to figure out what this song is in context because if the first song is looking for like hunting for a new life you know what does this mean you know maybe the state of emergency is being uncomfortable purposely making yourself uncomfortable so that you can explore like your limits I love how this song works like rhythmically and the time signature changes and stuff. It kind of doesn't let it settle, does it? You know? Emergency. Yeah. I do think that might be the that might be the thing here is that this song is kind of, you know, I wanna be in that state of emergency. I want to be able to test my limits. I want to kind of see what happens if I'm if I'm not comfortable, you know? And that kind of links with this idea of travel and exploring yourself, you know? I quite like the kind of distorted, kind of almost like punky elements that she ties into her songs. Because it doesn't necessarily sound as if like those elements would, you know, fit in a lot of the stringy kind of, you know, that kind of vibe. It's kind of a clash of styles. Maybe it's like talking about how when this person left her, she was left in a place of emergency, you know? And actually, she's thinking, no, this is a good thing, you know? Now I can find myself. I quite like this kind of open-ended section. It kind of is a bit of a reprieve from the distorted, metallic kind of drums. She really does have a fascination with strings, doesn't she? Just just having listened to Hunter and then to this, I feel like I'm kind of discovering a bit more of what the song is supposed to be, you know, in terms of the context. And that one is, yeah, it's such a beautiful contradiction in itself, right? Because it's like, it's where I long to be, a state of emergency. And actually the lyric and the production and everything is, is it's quite beautiful. There is a beauty in the, in the melody and everything that, like, that, state of emergency doesn't feel as if it should be a beautiful thing but but for her it is and i think it represents this feeling of push your limits kind of you know being left alone but actually the kind of silver lining being that now you can kind of find this beautiful thing which is you know independence and discovering yourself you know let's have a look at the lyrics again the emotional landscapes maybe that's like her she doesn't know how to feel like it's like a lot of contradictions in her feelings and like maybe this situation with this person has ha been very puzzling but now she feels as if she is in a place where although it's like there's an emergency you know it's not like she doesn't feel like settled and happy she feels like she's been forced into something that could be bad but is actually quite beautiful and is allowing her to learn things you know and that contradiction and juxtaposition is represented by the strings versus the drums let's go into the next one this is song number three this is unravel mm. this could be a sadder one hey Ooh, nice This is lovely. While you're away, my heart comes undone. She's unraveling while they're away. OK. 
Okay. Make new love. Wow. I love this one. This is beautiful. I like this idea that she's not broken but just unraveled. You know, she can be stitched back, well, maybe not stitched, weaved back together, you know. I love how, like, the kind of reverse strings almost sound like. An unraveling, you know. Nice. Love that organ, it just has so much like feeling to it. song yeah we are okay <laughs> love a transfer moment i really like that i really got lost in that that was really wonderful i love all this kind of like audio kind of representation of this unraveling you know particularly in the in the reverse strings and the quiet moments you know yeah and like the idea that like when this other person is away she she's unraveling but there's an optimism isn't there because she's saying you know i'm only unraveled you know i'm just like you know, the ball of yarn is, is unraveled. I can pull myself back together. Yeah, I love the kind of atmosphere it created. It was really wonderful. Felt kind of like a bit of a meditation. There's a sense of peace, you know, she does kind of like, it's almost like in writing this song, she's found a way to articulate how she felt, you know, and that you can send that peace in her, you know, through creation of the song. While you are away, my heart comes undone, slowly unravels in a ball of yarn. Our love in a ball of yarn, he'll never return it. So when you come back, we'll have to make new love. Oh, I see. She's very succinct with her lyrics. She doesn't mince her words. She's very, uh, caref carefully chooses the lyrics that she wants to use. And if she, w and she'll repeat them. You know, she's not afraid to have a set of lyrics and repeat it. It's like she doesn't want to overcomplicate the message, you know? And this one is, yeah, basically she kind of unravels and, bec and becomes undone when this person is away. So she's kind of like, you know, when you need to come, when you come back, we're going to have to rebuild this, you know, which is definitely less optimistic than I thought. So maybe, maybe my understanding of the first one is like, not that this person has left her forever, but maybe just left her temporarily. And this is kind of the album that she's making in the loneliness, you know, who is she when the other person's away and she has to exist on her own. I love that, that was actually really beautiful. I think that's my favourite so far. Right, okay, let's go on to song number four. This is Batch the Wreck. Ooh, drama. We're at the opera. Cool. I love the kind of very classical orchestral thing, but with this like drum machine in the middle, it's very cool. Nice. Bachelorette, that's another thing, right? Somebody like a bachelor or a bachelorette. Cool. Nice. This is powerful, this one. It's quite dark. I love how cinematic it is. That drum machine just like, cuts through and I love all the distortion and stuff she uses on it. Wow. God, this is so dramatic. I love it. It's theatrical as hell. The quality of the production is so great. It sounds like crunchy and all the production words that you like. All of those things. Just this huge sense of theatre to it as well. love the drama in this. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to the lyrics though. <laughs> Definitely gonna have to look them up. <laughs> it's definitely like anger. Oh, isn't there? Wow. Passion. Wow. Amazing. 
It's an accordion right at the end. Interesting. I wonder what the meaning of the accordion is supposed to represent. It's almost like it kind of undercuts the seriousness in a way, doesn't it? Maybe it's a bit of a kind of self-deprecating thing. I don't know. Wow. I, that was really powerful. I loved the the size of it, like how dramatic and huge it felt. Like, you know, something that, that you could imagine, you know, on like a big like opera stage or in a theatre. Yeah. And it's almost like the accordion at the end maybe like set it in France. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, go to the opera in Paris, you know, that kind of those kind of vibes kind of seeped their way in slightly you know yeah but maybe there's something kind of you know farcical about it maybe that she is you know kind of looking at herself and in that perspective maybe kind of thinking you know I'm taking this all so seriously ha what a joke do you know what I mean it's that there's a sense of that you know um very nuanced beautiful like and yeah and like as I said like the I just love how the, those really crunchy programmed drums kind of fit into the mix of like something that's very operatic you know you've got big timpanis going on you've got a lot of strings and a crunchy drum machine isn't something you, that you would necessarily would think would stylistically fit but it just nestles in there so beautifully and gives it this real kind of like kind of low kind of push and pull kind of really juicy kind of feeling it sounds like just the sound design on its own is amazing i love it um I'm a fountain of blood in the shape of a girl. <laughs> you're the <laughs> you're the bird on the brim, hypnotized by the world. Drink me, make me feel real. Wet your beak in the stream. Game we're playing is life. Love's a two-way dream. Okay, so it's quite self-deprecating. Like she's really saying, like, you know, I am something to play with and then throw away, you know, like be with me for one night, you know, but I'm a one-way street, you know, like I'm a path of cinders burning under your feet, like, I am trouble, you know, I am something to, you know, play with, and then, yeah, then throw away and let go. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of, like, natural image of, like, the earth, you know, like, um, the tides and the, and the, the water and the trees. I'm a tree that grows hearts, one for each that you take. You're the intruder's hand, I'm the branch that you break. It's almost like she feels like she's farming herself out to all these men and, like, and, the, and but every single time one of her branches is getting broken, one of our hearts is getting broken, you know. It's like how many like how many times can she go through kind of heartbreak and stuff before she is, you know, just a stump <laughs> of a tree, you know. A really fascinating imagery. I'd love to hear all your takes on these songs. The thing is with Bjork is that like she never paints things out literally. She makes you listen. She makes you kind of read the lyrics, take it in try and understand the riddle in a sense it's like she really kind of loves to get the listener thinking so of course as always like leave a comment about your interpretations of all these different songs because i really want to hear especially with bjork i really really want to hear like what you think they all mean what, what you think the whole album means as well yeah let's go on to the next song this is song number five this is all neon like till you Ooh. Sex. Not till it shimmers round your skull. Wow. The marvelous when all neon lights. Ooh. Talk about the glow of neon lights and halos and that kind of imagery. What an interesting drum beat. So you can sleep fetus style. Cause we're asking. Wow. Where are we going now? <laughs> That didn't go what I expected to do. I thought it was gonna like, build into like a kind of chorus moment. Soft distortion. The soft distortion fills you up. Cause we're asking. Yeah. Yeah. That vocal though is just so powerful, isn't it? Like I feel like we're kind of getting taken to this like neon world, you know. It's a heavy use of synth on this particular track. 
whereas the other songs seem to have more like natural instruments. It's almost like the light inside of her, the neon inside of her, the different levels of like this imagery, the lucent glow, <laughs> you could say. <laughs> I mean, she's like, maybe the, like the, the neon is a, like a metaphor for inner power and how maybe she can use that kind of neon energy to like heal other people, you know? Wow, cool. That was interesting. I feel like that was high on the metaphor, you know. I really love how the the song seems to be geared around kind of creating a feeling of, you know, kind of synthetic light. Um, there was a glow to it. There was a, uh, like, an atmosphere to it that kind of, I think, was probably the main focus of her songwriting process for this song. Let's dig into the lyrics and try and figure out this metaphor. Not till you halo all over me. I'll come over, not till it shimmers round your skull. Like an angelic kind of thing. I'll be yours, I weave for you. This marvellous web, glow in the dark threads, all neon like. The cocoon surrounds you, embraces all, so you can sleep, fetus style. And they will assist us, because we're asking for help. And the luminous beam, it feeds you. So she's talking about, like, almost like capturing somebody in a cocoon of neon light and using that energy to heal them. Um, with a razor blade, I'll cut a slit open and the luminous beam feeds you, honey, heals you. Don't get angry with yourself, I'll heal you. That is so many levels of like poetry to that that are, that are very strange. <laughs> um, there's almost this like imagery of her being like a spy that spider. Yeah, like she's like weaving the web, and but then the web kind of turns into a cocoon. So it's almost like, well, is she, you know, a butterfly? You know, it's like there's metamorphosis involved. There's, there's, it kind of fits with the the vibe of the album cover as well. That kind of has that kind of vibe to it. You know, I guess the neon represents an energy, and she's it's like a glowing cocoon that she's wrapping this person in a glowing cocoon, and she's going to use it to heal them. Maybe it's like her own like emotional energy. Maybe it's her music. I don't know. There's something there, isn't there? I'm not sure. Crazy. <laughs> Real open for discussion. Let me know what you think. Of course. Like. Okay. So song number six. This is five years. That almost sounds like a phone thing, you know? <laughs> like a phone out of operating line. Drums again. I think the drums are kind of the core, aren't they? Every song seems to have this the kind of explosive distortion drum track. I love the rhythm of it. I love how the, like, the track is kind of bouncy. Like you don't usually hear like distorted drums like that in a kind of bouncy rhythm. It's usually quite straight, like. Cool. Ooh. It sounds kind of wet. Wow. I love where it's at chordly as well. You can't handle love. I wonder who she's speaking to. <laughs> Building. Oh, nice. Oh, I love it. Wow. You can't handle love. It's obvious. Ugh. Mm. Day. I love how every single song, although they all sound very unique and very creative, I 
think the palette is still restricted. Like the drums have like a kind of a connection. The strings, the use of strings all have kind of a connection, you know? So everything still sounds like it belongs in the same world, you know? I just love the use of the drums into the next song. Yeah, fabulous. I love, just adore how those drums are used. Like, to use, like, so much distortion that it's, like, squished. It's like a flat signal. The attack is so flattened that it kind of has a kind of shh kind of sound to it, <laughs> rather than it's, it's like a shh, you know, <laughs> that makes any sense. And it, like that just gives it such a kind of visceral kind of feeling and to have that pushing through the strings again like like we had earlier in the album it just has such a kind of like unique kind of feeling to it and then to use that in a rhythm of a of kind of a swung rhythm like a which sounds almost like you know if you were to do it with a with a brush drum kit it would sound like jazz but it's not is it at all it's actually recontextualizing that kind of rhythm in a way that is so totally different and so totally unique. And I love the love, love, love the use of strings with it. And I just think the sound is just so like pinpoint, you know, she's really decided these are the palettes. This is the palette that I'm going to use of sounds and I'm going to get everything I can out of them. And this one again feels so different, but like it really all fits, you know, sonically, like every, every song on the album fits. That's, Look at the lyrics. So, I think you're denying me of something. Well, I've got plenty. You're the one who's missing out. But you won't notice till after five years if you live that long. Oof. You'll wake up all loveless. Sounds like a kind of an argument, right? Like with somebody you love, maybe, you know, like quite a strong argument, you know? <laughs> like, you're the one missing out. Like, you're doing something to me that's like to spite me. But actually, you're the one who's actually going to be missing out on me, on the love with me, you know? Um, I'm fine on my own, you know. I dare you to take me on. I dare you to show me your palms. I'm so bored with cowards. To show me your palms, that's like, you know, open fist, karate. No weapon, isn't it? Like, be honest, be vulnerable. Um, even if you're going to fight, you can't handle love. So, yeah, the whole thing is like a dare. It's like, like challenging someone, saying, look, come to me. Be honest. Be open. I'm so sick of people or of you not being truthful with me, not telling me how you really feel, maybe afraid of confrontation. She's like, confront me, you know? Yeah, so the whole song kind of becomes this like dare, you know, this challenge. And it's, yeah, and it's kind of daring them to be without her, daring them to go against her because actually she knows that she has something to offer and they'll be missing out if they don't have her, you know? Yeah, I like that. Cool, confrontational and like, like it's the kind of like, perspective that you just don't really get in so much of pop music it feels like a lot of the stories within pop music and I you know I sometimes rely on this too is about expressing things maybe more literally and also like perspective is like although this is like potentially to do with a relationship it's kind of a you know anger and confrontation isn't necessarily something that people are very yeah, it does feel very unique, not just for the poetry, but also just from the standpoint, you know? It's like her lyricism comes from a point of like, this is how I'm feeling right now. No, she's not explaining the feeling after the fact. She's not telling a story. The lyrics are in the moment. She's writing from that emotion. It's almost like kind of capturing that feeling while it's happening rather than like looking back and kind of explaining around it, which I think is like what a lot of storytelling kind of ends up becoming. Um, so rather, it's kind of in first person rather than in third person, does that make sense? I think that's where, that's something that you don't necessarily get quite so much now, you know? Let's go on to the next song. This is song number seven. This is Immature, Mark Bell's version. I'm not sure who Mark Bell is. I love how it continues in. I should probably do this, like, the whole album without stopping, shouldn't I? <laughs> I like that little bell sound. So Again, we've got more of like that kind of rhythm, not a straight rhythm, but like a kind of swung feeling. The use of percussion in this is very small and focused and tight. Oh, I'm obsessed with the production. 
so cohesive and yet so creative and weird at the same time. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how you manage that. <laughs> Nice. It's almost like a tribal feeling, isn't it? Oh, wow! She she has such a way with her voice that is so guttural and like ooh, right on the edge of that emotion. That's often anger and frustration, isn't it? In her voice, she's very good at portraying those emotions. Oh, wow. How can I be so immature? So she's kind of lambasting herself, isn't she? Maybe she's made a mistake and she's like, how could I do that? How could I be so immature? I thought I was past that, you know? Cool. Yeah, love that. Particularly, again, the production. Every single song is just so fascinating to listen to and like, that one like to kind of combine what is potentially I'm not sure exactly where you could trace that rhythm to it's probably like mit like some kind of tribal rhythm sounds like that doesn't it correct me and all this stuff like I'm always open to learning about um particularly world music because I'm not that knowledgeable on different kind of cultures like like the names of rhythms and all that kind of stuff again actually similarly to the last song really fascinating to combine that kind of rhythm with sounds that aren't usually used within that rhythm you know very sampled very you know, drum machine-y. This one kind of like, felt like the whole song was kind of, ooh, was kind of swimming, you know? Yeah, it was really cool. Let's have a look at the lyrics. I wanna know what it's about. How could I be so immature to think he could replace the missing elements in me? How extremely lazy of me. How could I be so immature? Again, very, very focused lyrics. Cause that's it. That's all the lyrics. And it very clearly shows she's very frustrated with how she's behaved she's basically kind of saying you know i thought that by being with this person they could fix all the faults within my personality but how could i be so mature to expect that actually i think she's realized that since being on her own i think this is the vibe of the whole album she seems to have been away from whoever she has been living with and stuck in her own thoughts and written this whole album maybe in that time she's looking back and thinking wow i've discovered all these things within myself that are actually like you know, are still flaws in my personality, still things that I'd like to kind of work on on myself. I thought this person had fixed them, but how could I be so mature as to actually expect that of somebody else? If you have things you have to deal with, if you're like trauma that you need to work past maybe, that is something that you have to do individually. Maybe they might help you fix yourself, but they're not gonna fill those parts within you that are missing, you know? This is part of the realizations that she's having being on her own for a while. Very cool. I'm loving like the vibes, the, the vibes, the sense of like the story that I'm getting. It's very kind of open-ended and very up for interpretation, very stylistic, but there's so much of a centre of, yeah, individuality, independence, discovering oneself, you know, even though it's kind of hidden in strange extended metaphors. Let's go on to song number eight. This is Alarm Call. This is Alarm Call. Ooh. Sounds like a distorted, like, chime. Ooh. Again, this real juxtaposition of some quite harsh distorted drums and some beautiful sounding sounds. Nice. This one's a little bit more danceable, isn't it, actually? <laughs> this is enlightenment yeah so maybe she's fully discovering like something about herself mm. that snare is taking it very 90s isn't it Cool. I just, I just, every moment is just so overwhelming with like how much is there and how kind of creative it is and how surprising it is, you know? 
wake up. It almost sounds like all the instruments kind of sound like they could be alarms in a way, you know. Cool. Wow. Almost seems sounds like they've like resampled the song. Cool. That one's a bit more of like a danceable kind of vibe. It's a little bit close to like R&B or something, isn't it? Um, which I guess was kind of very much the sound of the times, but something that she hasn't really gone near. So yeah, quite interesting. It still sounds like it fits within the album though. I think that's kind of to do with, I think the highly distorted drums really are, are the heart of the sonic uh, landscape of this album and are like a hallmark of it, you know. I think she really, really is keyed into how to create a set of songs that all just sound as if they're within, within the same universe but perfectly balanced in a way that each song still has its own very strong identity and I think that really show goes to show like kind of master in production and like artistic vision because like that is a balance that I think uh, something that every kind of album artist is trying to strike is how do I make all these songs sound like they go together but actually still sound very individual and very unique. I don't think it's easy to do so. I think there are a lot of albums out there that do kind of end up sounding quite similar or that sound way too disparate, you know? And she is, strikes the balance absolutely perfectly, doesn't she? Yeah. And I think she does that by using a variety of rhythms. Even though she uses the same drums, the rhythms are very, very different and the way in which she uses those drums are very, very different in each song. Let's have a look at the lyrics for this one. I have walked this earth and watched people doesn't scare me at all. I can be sincere and, and, and say I like them. And Bithel Falta Mer and yeah, oh, oh, oh. I'm guessing that maybe that's a nice sound sure. You can't say no to hope, you can't say no to happiness. I want to go on a mountain top of the radio and, and good batteries <laughs> and play a joyous tune and free the human race from suffering. I'm no fucking Buddhist, but this is enlightenment. So this really feels like she's kind of come out of her kind of alone time, solo whatever maybe she's been on tour maybe she's kind of has that kind of sense of loneliness maybe because she's on tour maybe because she's not with the people that she loves but she seems to have got to a point where she feels so happy within herself settled that when she meets other people and when she kind of goes around the world meeting all these different people she can be sincere and she can say you know i know myself and i know that I really like you <laughs> and I think that that's something that she wants to be able to like push out to the rest of humanity is this idea of bit of confidence leading to absolute kind of sincerity in oneself and I think going to the mountain with the radio is maybe her, like imagery for maybe her being able to project her message across the world and maybe she's saying that like you know in all this kind of loneliness and alone time and the time in which she's been able to spend on herself she has learned something um, and she wants to kind of shout that into the sky and let everybody know that they should do the same maybe and maybe that's the idea of the album you know um, is encouraging people to embrace their individuality and I guess the alarm represents maybe like her waking up you know the alarm was maybe something somebody leaving her or her leaving someone the catalyst for her loneliness and that alarm has woken her up and now she's awake, she is aware of herself and she's aware of who she is and she's happy about that. You, do you know what I mean? It's like like she's been asleep this whole time and now she knows, you know? Yeah. Cool. I'm getting lost in the story of this. This is great. <laughs> yeah, fabulous. F me. Jesus, it's so cool. Next one. Pluto. I had this in the last video, but now with the context of the rest of the album, I think it's going to be really important to re-listen to these ones. Yeah, so this is Pluto. Oh yeah, this is the crazy glitchy one. I forgot about this. <laughs> this is like really got a bit of a punk feeling to it, isn't it? In terms of its attitude, not necessarily like the genre. Oh yeah, excuse me, I just have to explode. Bye. Explode this body of me. It's maybe like she's breaking beyond herself, you know, tearing down the expectations that she has on herself. Yeah. 
So this takes the distortion and runs with it. You know, we've had a lot of these distorted drums the whole way through, but the rest of the sounds haven't necessarily matched that level. And now she's like really going to that place. But it feels like she's kind of exploring these sounds and like in a way, like to the outer reaches of both kind of sides of the sonic landscape, you know? <laughs> Terrifying. In a good way. <laughs> Oof. Oh my god. <laughs> I forgot how like intense this one is. <laughs> I always have a moment where I finger snap to a song. <laughs> oh, the get this is the gated bit, yeah, love it. See, that like just is so intense. It takes it really, really, really to the edge of that like punk rock distortion place that is like, yeah, very like the, whole, the rest of the album does have an touch of that doesn't it but it never goes there right until this moment and it seems as if like like the whole album is kind of has I guess like it's threatening it but yeah like maybe it's like building up the kind of pent up energy so that when it gets to this song it's just like you know quite a satisfying listen in that sense yeah let's have a look at the lyrics so I can kind of figure out oh yeah I forgot about that Oh yeah, I remember this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, excuse me, but I have to explode this body. I'll be brand new, brand new tomorrow. I'm a little bit tired, but I'll be brand new. Yeah, it's like, I feel like this has been like a kind of metamorphosis. She spoke about the metamorphosis earlier in the album, didn't she? Which song was it? The one about all neon-like with all the, you know, the cocooning and everything. It's like this sense of her being left to her own devices, kind of going into this cocoon and finding a new sense of self finding like an inner confidence that she, and an, a, like a like a control over her own weirdness that she feels like she can put out to the universe and now she's like I'm letting go of my mortal body I'm letting go of all the things that held me back before and I am fully transitioning into this new part of my life and I'm doing that by exploding my body do you know what I mean it's like <laughs> the, if the body is representing what has been trapping her up until this time, she is exploding it. She's letting go of everything. She's just obliterating who she used to be and becoming this new person. It's really, like, in context, really means so much more, makes so much more sense. I think when I first listened to it, I was like, okay, cool, good for you. But, like, I get it, like, yeah. Like, having followed the kind of storyline up to this song, it, this makes so much sense for her to have a song where it's like, you know, she's letting go of everything from before and stepping into a new phase of her life. That's what the album is about, and this is what that was, what that's, this song kind of sums up in this kind of forceful way. And it's an explosion of a song, you know, and she's exploding away the, the fears and the, and the, yeah, the restrictions of her past. It's really cool. I love this idea of this metamorphosis. What does the word homogenic actually mean? Oh, okay, so it's about like being all the same within society. Right, 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 right. Yeah, like homogenous. Yeah, of course. Homogenous, everybody being the same. And that's what she's throwing away. I think like maybe there's been a, there's a lot of pressure on her to kind of conform. And maybe now that she's found this kind of space for her to be individual, for her to be completely herself, she's almost like the... Homo the homogeneousness, homogeneity, homo yeah, homogeneity, <laughs> throwing the homogeneity <laughs> off. She's saying, you know, this is not it. This is this is not what society actually is. Um, and it yeah, it feels like she's breaking out of that. And this and this album is the process of her fighting against homog homo <laughs> homogeneity, <laughs> homogeneousness. Um, yeah. Amazing. This is really blowing my mind now. I'm kind of getting it, you know? <laughs> really cool. Now that we know all this, let's go on to the last song. This is... Oh, no, let's not. <laughs> Before we go on to the last song, um, if you've made it this far and you're not yet subscribed, then make sure to do so. The button is right there. Go for it. Cool, good, nice. Um, 
yeah and if you do want to support me on patreon there's loads of different ways in which you can support me and get loads of cool stuff in return including uncut reactions you can watch videos early you can request songs you can request albums you can do whatever you want and yep check out my music and if you want to follow me on social media you can as well um i'm at sing song down on instagram and tiktok i share a lot of gaga memes and pokemon memes it's basically my output links in the description for everything i talk about just go down there cool okay let's go on to the last song this is something i heard but the last one i listened to was from the best of Thing. This is Howie's version. I don't know how it differs. I guess we'll find out. It might not differ at all. Whatever. This is Orders Full of Love. Howie's version. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like this is different. I don't remember this. Or maybe I'm just being an idiot. It was a couple of months ago. It's almost like after the explosion, the kind of the, you know, the sound of like, almost nothing you know and this is like the new like the butterfly merging you know oh this one is her kind of embracing the other weirdos isn't it I think creating a space for weirdos to be free and be weird <laughs> I love that like the sound design here almost feels post explosion it's like things have exploded and there's this new world underneath you know like the sub textures kind of give it this kind of it's kind of aftershocks you know that's yeah I love that panned vocal. Very cool. I love this. This is such a cool finale. It's kind of, wow, just like, just be like, everything, like, my love is open to you, you know? Oh, this is incredible. This is different, right? Amazing. The sound design is just fucking incredible, like... Ooh. Something's coming. Wow. I just... This is like that, like... Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to listen back to the list, the version that I listened to last time and like compare it because like I don't remember being like that I might just be being an idiot yeah that really felt like it was yeah post explosion it really felt like the world exploded her body exploded she let go of everything and it's like in the silence after the explosion in like in the midst of the aftershock in the flattened earth comes this like beautiful creature that is like come out of the cocoon come out of from the body that was discarded and is there to just exist in this kind of ethereal state it's like the the woman on the front of the album is like emerged you know i love the kind of flutteriness of the accordion it kind of gives it this kind of like butterfly cocoon that kind of thing i love like what they do with all the sub textures on it it just really kind of gives it such a kind of sense of drama you know um and yeah and it just thumbs up this album like let me just look at the lyrics because like i just want to quickly double check that and then you'll be given love you'll be taken care of you'll be given love you have to trust it maybe not from the sources you have poured yours not from the directions you are staring at it's all around you all is full of love all around you so i uh, yeah i think like to me she seems to be singing to those people who have felt as if they are not worthy maybe the people that they're with aren't showing them love because maybe they don't fit into the same boxes that they do maybe they're not homogenous people they're not people who you know just go along with everything else they are creative and they break out of the norm and she's kind of giving them a place and kind of saying you know although 
there might be people around you who don't appreciate your worth. I do. And there actually are so many other people around in the world that you you can connect with through music, through, you know, art and creativity who get you, that all those people are there. All is full of love. The world is full of love. And now I've emerged from this cocoon of like a crisis. I have learned to embrace my own uniqueness and I have learned to explode away the homogenousness <laughs> um, and you can too you know now hearing parallels with like the message that like Aurora likes to put out you know obviously like I've done a lot of Aurora on the channel and she cites Bjork as like a big inspiration for her and that's something that Aurora creates in, a, in her music like her queendom is a place for the warriors and weirdos and for those people who are underestimated to feel they are accepted and I feel feel like that message is an extension of what Bjork is trying to put out on this album she's saying you know you don't have to follow the norm you can use crazy to start distorted drum machines along with really beautiful strings um you can you know be completely weird and have a completely different perspective and be creative and be yourself and there are people who will accept you you don't have to homogenize you do not have to you know be part of the the homogenic <laughs> you know and yeah in this last song she's saying that well, she's saying that that love is there for you and the space is there um for you to be yourself and you can discover yourself in the same way that she's managed to discover herself in her loneliness. She's been kind of empowered to find herself and to become an independent weirdo. And uh, it's amazing. Oh, shit. I feel like this album took me a moment to get into it. I think like the first few songs, I think I was starting to pick up on some of the themes. But like, I think it's one of those things where like, I'm sure like the more you listen to it, the more you get it. And on first listen, it's not necessarily as easy to pick up on all this stuff, especially when the songs that I'd heard before, I heard them completely out of context. I think, you know, I didn't really get it. And now, like, now I've got to the end of the album, I've heard all of it. I feel like I can piece together exactly what she's trying to say. And, and like, I think when I next listen to this album, I'm going to have such a, like, a much greater idea of, like, the whole vibe, the whole story, the whole kind of what she's trying to express. Um, I don't think she necessarily made it to be listened to once and understood straight away. So yeah, although it took me a moment to get into, I get it and it I think it's f***ing incredible. Like, to express your individuality and creativity in such a way that is totally unique and still totally unique and actually something I've picked up in every single Bjork song is that she is totally unique she's not afraid to show that but to kind of express the core of your uniqueness and the core of your creativity through an album that almost kind of tells the story of how you got to the point where you feel comfortable to be unique and creative and whatever it defines her identity and I can understand why you guys watching were all so passionate about the songs on this album it's because it almost like expresses to the listener exactly who she is she's not just telling one isolated story she's telling something that is core to her her being and core to her kind of ethos the way in which she moves through the world and i think she then then goes through that personally and then in the last few songs kind of manages to find a way to bring people along on that journey and i think like it therefore kind of becomes this kind of perfect this is what I went through, this is how I got through it, This, these are all the feelings and, and my evolution and my discovery. This is the apex of it, L let it all go, let it all out, and here you are, you can come with me if you want, you know? And to finish it on that and have that kind of as a complete kind of thing is incredible. And that's not even to mention how the production and the musical kind of side of it really does all f feel like a complete set like it feels like a complete album like every single song utilizes the same instruments but in a very different way like I was saying it's like she picked a palette of sounds and was like this is how I'm going to use it to express myself but it doesn't mean any of the songs sound limited it doesn't mean any of the songs sound vaguely similar but somehow she's managed to use all these different like colors on her palette to the full breadth of their potential and 
has therefore managed to make something that sounds like every song was totally unique but belongs with one another you know absolutely inspiring to hear an artist and a producer who is limiting themselves and still managing to find something so incredible i think we have so much ac access to everything nowadays that it can be a bit immobilizing and actually as a creative person i think it's really good to limit yourself because as bjork is showing you can still do something that's absolutely magnificent creative masterclass here with bjork um, it's really fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for suggesting this and getting me to do this album because it's really just madness. I love it. It's, it's incredible. Um, and not in not in the way that I ever really usually listen to music. Like I'm, you know, I'm a pop music guy, like through and through. And this is helping me to listen to music in a very different way um, and expanding my breadth of thought in terms of like where music can be, what it can do and the stories that you can tell. Mind-blowing. Absolutely. Shit. <laughs> um, make sure to let me know what your stories and your relationship with this album is. It's obviously like been around for what is it, 97? So like 25 years. So yeah, I'm sure you guys have a lot of stories like where were you when you first heard it? Like what are your connections to it? Like has it encouraged you to be a complete nutter and a weirdo? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to hear all your stories about this album. And of course, like I might have completely misunderstood the entire <laughs> album. So if that's the case, then let me know. And yeah, make sure to let me know what Bjork album I should do next. I was thinking about um, either Vespertine or Volnik. Cura, or if I should go back and do the earlier ones first, I don't know. Before we sign off, a special thank you and a shout out to my Weeping Wendy patrons and up. Their names are appearing on screen right now. These guys have pledged to these to the upper tier and one of their perks is getting their names in the end of the video. So thank you very much to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you haven't checked out my other Bjork stuff, then go watch it. But if not, I will see you next time for another video. Cool. Bye. All is full of love.